Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome back to this next part of the tutorial series on Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. In the previous video, I went into the characteristics, the components, and everything else that you can see on the left-hand side of the designer of your ships. Now, this part has been covered in the previous video, so I'm going to click these things closed, and we're going to have a look at the middle and the right-hand side of the screen, because here you can see the weight. How heavy is your ship? Currently, it has a maximum tonnage of 33,500 tons. I'm currently using 16,330. Below that, you can see the cost of the ship. Now, if you're playing a custom battle, cost is usually not a big consideration. But if you're playing in the campaign, which is going to come at some point as the game gets more and more developed, this might very well be a very important factor. Because I imagine that a nation is only going to have a certain amount of cash available and you can either go for, let's say, a smaller fleet of smaller ships, or sorry, a larger fleet of smaller ships, or maybe a few capital ships, depending on your choice. And then over here, the game is going to tell you what component is absolutely critical. Now, in this case, I need to have a main tower. And once I have that, the game goes, okay, you got a main tower, now you need a secondary tower. All right, I'll add that. What do I need now? Now you need a funnel. A funnel is going to be allowed to, or is going to allow your ship to breathe, as it were. It's going to pump out the smoke that the ship's engines produce. All right, I've added that. What's next? Main guns, at least two needed. All right, I will add two small 11 inch guns onto this battleship. And now you can see that this notification is gone. And now you can actually take the ship out to fight. There is one very important thing over here, and that's the four weight offset. This means that the ship is a little heavier towards the front, so towards the bow, than she is towards the stern. And this is going to mess with your accuracy. And we're going to look into that right now on the right-hand side. If you click open the overview, it's going to give you an overview of the ship's stats. Now, these ship stats are impacted heavily by the things that you selected on the left-hand side of the screen. The amount of armor you can change under the armor scheme here. As you can see, the ship says, I have three to 15 inches of armor plus 70%. And that's because the armor quality raises the amount of armor that you have. So you can effectively add 70% of 15 to that number. And that's the amount of armor that you're actually going to have. What else can you see here? Uh, maintenance costs. This is something you can safely ignore until you're actually playing the campaign. The cost of the ship. How much time is going to take to build the ship? This is stuff that you probably don't need unless you're playing the campaign. Again, which isn't out yet at the time of me making this video, which is Alpha 7.5. You can also see here how much crew you need. I imagine this is also going to be a sort of campaign resource. If you run out of crew, if you run out of available crew for your ships, well, good luck. You can build your warship, but you can't crew it. So make sure you have enough crew. Again, not really a factor for custom battles. Then, the ship details. If you click this open, you're going to get up to a long list of information. A lot of it is just stuff that you can pretty much safely ignore because it is going to be already displayed on the screen somewhere else, like the displacement and the current weight. Resistance of the hull, 103. It affects the damage received from shells, hits, and torpedoes after armor penetration. So it means that the more resistance you have, after a shell penetrates, I believe it works as a sort of detractor from the amount of damage that you actually take. So let's say very, very flatly, you take 100 points of damage, uh, you have a resistance of 50, that leaves you with another 50 damage. Something to that extent. But I don't know exactly know the development formula of this resistance modifier. Hull form. The more sleek your warship is, the better it's going to go through the water. Now, this is something that is not really critical because you can usually mess with that in the characteristics of the ship by using speed and adjusting the type of engine that you have. So again, don't really pay that too much mind. Maneuverability is really not that important up to the point where you get to the course change time, acceleration and turning rate and turning circle. Now, turning circle is going to be important when you're trying to maneuver and fight the enemy. And when you're trying to dodge against torpedoes. Very important to know is that your turning circle is pretty much directly impacted by a few things. It's going to be impacted by the displacement. 
My turning circle has now been reduced to 657 meters, but I also sacrificed quite a lot of displacement in order to achieve that. The ship has a lot of turning slowdown. This means how much speed do you lose when you're making a turn? This is something that you can also, much like the turning circle, impact by having auxiliary engines on your ship. I managed to get my turning circle down to 469, but the turning slowdown is not very good. That partially has to do with the type of engine that I have and the type of hull form that you have. What else? Visibility range. Surface visibility is how easy is it to spot your ship. And the spotting bonus is how easy is it to get detected. Well, you got a pretty <clears throat> detectable warship here. But then again, it's a battleship. For a destroyer, or even a torpedo boat, this is going to be much, much lower. Torpedo detection range. From how far can we detect torpedoes? And this is going to get impacted by the acoustics. If I have Sonar 3, which is currently the most advanced system to detect torpedoes, and potentially later on in the game, submarines, you can see that my torpedo detection range immediately jumps to 4,655 meters, which gives me way more time to start maneuvering. Armament. Currently I only have those 11-inch guns, but you can have a whole list of weapon systems. Accuracy. This is going to impact, of course, how likely you are to hit. I get a nice bonus to long-range accuracy at the moment. And that has to do with the main tower and the rangefinder, potentially. Aiming speed. How quickly am I going to be landing my shells? The armoring. And again, this is mostly stuff that you can adjust by looking at this, so you can pretty safely ignore that part. And damage control. What's my fire chance? How, mo how well? How likely am I to catch fire in this ship? And again, this can be impacted by the items on the left as well. My fire chance is currently minus 20%, whereas if I go to reinforced bulkheads, it goes to minus 30%. Because the reinforced bulkheads too give me a bit less chance of fire, and they also help with flood with uh, fire extinguishing. Now you got the flooding chance, which is also going to be very important, and you can adjust that by having an anti-flood system. And more importantly, an anti-torpedo system. The chance of taking flooding when I install my anti-torpedo system is going to be reduced massively. Right, let's close this thing up and look at the next section. Weight and costs. Right now, it's not really a, a window that you have to keep a very close eye on. Again, it has a lot of costs, which for custom battles are not very important, but for the campaign can be. Because let's say that you have only a certain budget that you want to work with and you want to try and min-max this ship and figure out what exactly it is that you're paying so much money for. This window is going to tell you exactly what that is. In the current situation, I'm paying quite a lot for engines and boilers. That has to do with me using the geared steam turbines, the double geared steam turbines. This gives me a 675% modifier to engine cost. If I were to change that to, let's say, marine diesel, you're going to see that this number jumps down a lot. That just saved me 2 million. So this is a way that you can quickly min-max your ship and figure out what it is that you're paying so much for. Or, if you're trying to get some more weight on your ship or trying to get a bigger gun, but you need to shred some weight somewhere else, this list is going to tell you what is currently the heaviest part of your ship. And then finally, the stats... These are, again, important elements to determine how your ship's performing. It's going to tell you the minimum requirements, and these are the things that you also get over here in the middle of the screen if you don't actually adhere to them. You once again get an overview of the resistance, turning slowdown, longitudinal weight offset. Now that is that four weight offset that I mentioned previously, and that is going to impact your ship a bit. Currently, it's going to add a debuff of only 0.2 base accuracy, so it's really not that bad. But the worse this gets, the worse these things become. And right now, I have a 6.3 accuracy penalty and a minus 2.1 base accuracy. If I try to make that worse, let's see. Uh, let's put that thing as far forward as possible. And let's see if I can get this gun over here. Now I have a four weight offset of minus 
or well of 20% so the bow is 20% heavier than the stern and you're gonna start to notice that so keep an eye on that part towers give you information about what accuracy you have the communications range and finally smoke interference and the last thing you can see here is engine efficiency how efficient is your engine your engine efficiency is determined by how many funnels you have and also by what sort of boilers you have what sort of speed you have and all of these things work together to figure out what engine efficiency you get so if i go slower i don't need as much of a big engine and my engine efficiency is good enough if i want to go very quick with this battleship then one funnel is just not going to cut it so i'm going to need more engine efficiency which means more funnels if your engine efficiency is too low you're going to be penalized in the form of acceleration and torque at high rpm and this can really impact your ability to maneuver, to avoid torpedoes, and to change the direction of your ship in case the battle goes badly. Again, Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts has a lot of information for you. Initially, when you're just starting out with the game, I'd say have fun with the left-hand side and the bottom-hand side. Don't look at the right-hand side too much, except for engine efficiency. That's the one thing that you want to have a look at under stats. If you have any questions about the game, let me know down below in the comment section. There are more tutorials in the playlist, and I'll try to add more tutorials as there is a demand for them. So if you have a question, let me know, and I'll either direct you to a different tutorial or make a tutorial for that particular topic. Have fun playing the game. Don't take it too seriously. Mess with it. Make it a fun ship. Make it a very poorly designed ship or a fantastically historic designed ship. It is up to you. As long as you have fun, I'd say you're playing the game right. Thank you for watching and have fun.